hallelujah lift your hands to Jesus and bless him from the depth of your heart the mighty God the King of Kings Lord of Lords is someone blessing him one generation will declare your praise to another the one who sits upon the circles eternity cannot fathom and comprehend your wisdom and your power and your grace the earth is your throne the heaven is your throne and the earth your footstool bless him we are come to Mount Zion ask him to give you an encounter tonight father give me an encounter even by your word let the scrolls be opened let the seals be broken cause me to see is someone praying give me total liberty tonight For in Jesus name we pray for in Jesus name we pray Amen. father we ask tonight that you will speak to us we have come with hearts opened we have come with our spirits opened we've come with our minds opened we pray in the name of Jesus that this will be one service that will transform our lives indeed bring us liberty by your word and let Jesus be glorified in Jesus name we pray God bless you please be seated thank you very much we've been on a teaching series titled let them have dominion the goal is to bring the saints into higher levels of authority even through light through understanding um, tonight is part two but because of the peculiar because of the nature of tonight's teaching um, we're discussing I promised us that we're going to be discussing on altars just help those under the anointing so we'll be looking at the mystery of altars it is the part two you can put in bracket let them have dominion I decided that we'll give it this title so that those who would want to pick up this very teaching and listen to it they would know where to find it right so it's still part two of the series but we'll call it the mystery of altars Genesis 35 from verse 1 to 7 light me Lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like menorah light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord like a candle. Hallelujah. In this kingdom, we only rise and we reign through light. That means when God wants to help a man in this kingdom, he will shorten the distance between you and your access to light one of the ways that God shows us mercy in this kingdom is to shorten the distance between you and the light needed to bring you from the ground and to enthrone you he said the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light hallelujah Genesis 35 we're reading the first seven verses and God said unto Jacob arise go up to Bethel and dwell there 
and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother reading to 7 verse 2 then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him put away strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments verse 3 and let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the day which I went verse 4 and they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their land and all their earrings which were in their ears and Jacob hid them under the oak which was in Shechem verse 5 and they journeyed and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob verse 6 now so Jacob came to Luz which was in the land of Canaan pay attention that is Bethel he and all the people that were with him the last verse now it says and he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel because there God appeared unto him when he fell from the face of his brother Genesis chapter 8 and verse 20 And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. We're reading to 22. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth neither will i again smite any more every living thing as i have done 22 he says and while the earth remaineth seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease hallelujah so we have i decided to uh, there are so many things to teach but will hopefully um, carry over some of those to part three there will be a part three to this so but tonight i want to really focus on the subject of altars and there are three things we're going to be looking at number one we want to understand what altars are number one this is our first goal for this discussion we want to understand what altars are from a biblical standpoint number two we seek to understand through this teaching tonight the relationship between altars and the dominion of the saints is it true that there is a relationship between altars and the dominion of the saints and then number three we will be learning how to raise altars and how to pull down altars if we are able to achieve these three then we have done justice as far as this teaching is concerned tonight one more time to understand what altars are number two to understand the relationship between altars and the dominion of the saints and then number three to know how to raise altars and also to learn how to pull down altars in the name of Jesus Christ all right so let's begin our teaching the word altar a l t a r the word altar is mentioned about 364 times in the Bible using King James as a reference the word altar is mentioned about 364 times in the Bible and when when you mention the word altar the average believer is thinking of a shrine is thinking of a herbalist or is thinking of some superstitious thing i hope you realize and as you'll be learning shortly that the entire concept of altars did not come from satan and was never used by satan for a long time are we together 
the idea of altars was God's own idea let's look at a few scriptures the entire book of Genesis has the word altar mentioned about 10 times and just to set the basis right I like us to quickly run through some of these scriptures media so we have a lot to do please let's work together so that we'll save time genesis 8 22 we or 8 20 we already looked at that while the earth okay 20 just go to 20 it says noah builded an altar unto the lord he built an altar unto the lord now do you know it will interest you to know that this was immediately after the flood how do you come out of a flood and the very first thing you are doing is to build an altar not to celebrate not to discuss not to laugh at those who perished he went straight and he built an altar genesis chapter 12 from verse 7 and 8 genesis chapter 12 the bible says and the lord appeared unto abram and said unto thy seed i will give this land and there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Verse 8 now. And he removed from thence unto the mountain of the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and high on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Genesis chapter 13 verse 3 and 4. Genesis 13 3 and 4 and he went on his journey from the south even to Bethel unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai uh-huh verse 4 unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first and there Abraham called upon the name of the Lord Genesis 13 and verse 18 still the same chapter verse 18 now and Abraham removed his tent he says and he came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre which in which is in Hebron and he built there an altar unto the Lord Genesis chapter 22 and verse 9 please be patient as we lay this foundation Genesis 22 and verse 9. This is Abraham and Isaac. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Genesis 26, 25. Genesis 26 25 this is Isaac now and he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there and there Isaac's servants also dug a well Genesis chapter 33 from verse 19 and 20 we're looking at from the law of first mention that every context of the altar as you see captured in Genesis had nothing to do with any demonic interaction 19 and he bought a parcel of field where he had spread his tent at the hand of the children of Hamor Shechem Shechem's father for a hundred pieces of money verse 20 and he erected there an altar and he called it El Elohi Israel Genesis 35 we're reading verse 1 verse 3 and verse 7 Genesis 35 verse 1 and God said unto Jacob arise go to Bethel and dwell there God himself is asking a man now make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when you run away from your brother Esau verse 3 the Bible says he encouraged his people and said let us arise and go to Bethel and let us make an altar unto God verse 7 and he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel because God appeared unto him and he fled from the face of his brother this 
this is the entire mention of the word altar in the book of genesis in fact let me give you one more bonus scripture exodus chapter 17 from 14 and 15 exodus this is moses and the lord said unto moses write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of joshua for i will utterly put out the remembrance of amalek from under heaven verse 5 in honor to that covenant moses built an altar and called the name of it jehovah nisi give us understanding in the name of jesus christ you would see that from the entire book of genesis you do not find any reference to altar being made or done with any demonic proposition that every time you saw the idea of altar it was number one by men who feared god and it was unto god in fact in some of the references it was god himself who told the men make an altar there and you would notice from the scriptures that we read that every time they erected altars number one they erected altars and called upon the name of the lord from that point or they erected altars to honor something spectacular god had done either a covenant he gave them or a promise some kind of promise or before or after disaster you would see that they erected altars now the subject of altars has been addressed across boards we've had people as always you know approach it scripturally and intelligently but we've had people also approach it um in a way that is not entirely scriptural and so when we mention the word altar most believers especially believers that are quite sound in the word immediately frown at the concept because the only idea of altars we have is the idea that has largely been communicated by the prophetic and the apostolic ministry and i confess to you that not much justice has been done as far as bringing a sound biblical exegesis on the subject of altars many have used it as a ritual to delve into extra biblical practices many have used it as a ritual uh, sadly to manipulate people but i have taught you here that just because a spiritual concept is not communicated properly or is used um, to manipulate people does not mean that concept is unscriptural here's the bible speaking to you the entire book of genesis we checked the the word altar and every time it was used it was by men who feared god and then it was unto god the god of the bible what then is an altar please write what is an altar a few definitions number one an altar is a place a platform or a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds i'll take it again an altar is a place a platform or a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds that is the first definition of an altar that it is a place a platform or a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds Luke chapter 1 please from verse 10 and 11 just to buttress on that definition the bible says the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the time of the incense and then verse 11 and there appeared unto him an angel of the lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense hallelujah zechariah the priest having that encounter and an angel comes but the angel comes and stands at the altar at the time of incense so it is a place it is a platform or it is a system that allows interactions between the realm of the spirit and the physical realm on legal basis it is called an altar number two second definition an altar is also a platform for authorization of laws 
and authorizations of spirits to function upon the earth an altar is a platform for the authorization of laws l-a-w-s and the authorization of spirits to function upon the earth so an altar is a platform that gives authorization to spiritual laws to function an altar is a place a platform that gives authorization for spirits to be able to function the last definition you have that down an altar finally is a platform where covenants are activated and maintained an altar is a platform where covenants are activated and where covenants are maintained i gave you three definitions let me do a quick recap that number one an altar is a place a platform and a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm number two an altar is a platform that authorizes spiritual laws and authorizes spirits to function remember i have taught you that based on the law of territory it is illegal for any spirit to function in the earth realm that does not have a body remember our teaching last last week we stated that this earth was made for men not just men but for entities with physical bodies that means if you do not have a physical body you do not have a legitimate authorization to function on the earth and then if you do not have a human body dominion was not for you are we together dominion is only for spirits that are hosted in human bodies that means even if you are a spirit that is in the body of a lower animal you are authorized to function because of that body but not authorized to walk in dominion so the condition to be a man therefore is that number one you must be a spirit number two that spirit must be hosted in a human body and then number three that spirit must have a solical connection of the mind containing the will emotions and intellect any creature that does not have this combination in one place cannot be called man are we together an altar there are many people who have risen to notable levels of excellence manifesting superhuman abilities and commanding strange levels of results that seem to dumbfound people both in the church as believers and then people outside of the faith life the level of invincibility that is shown in their exploits and their results seem to keep people at a loss how are these people achieving this whether it is in politics and governance whether it is in business and finance whether it's in spirituality of all sorts herbalists and all of that now there are those who have lived in denial as to the reality of such a concept of altars then there are those who have admitted that there is such a concept but they are clueless as to the dynamics of the workings of this altar many of us today i submit to you are victims of altars many of us today are more affected by altars than we can imagine and the teaching tonight will open your eyes to see i will be showing you why it is possible to pray and fast over certain issues and then nothing happens many people have tried binding and casting situations many people have tried quoting scriptures and speaking many people have done dry fast all kinds of fast fruit fast and yet certain situations seem to stand and stare them at the face this situation seemed to make jesus look powerless seem to make the faith life uninteresting but you see the bible says it is through knowledge that the just will be delivered not through assumptions not through a good heart it takes knowledge i have studied this subject myself and in studying it to prepare 
um, for this meeting I was amazed at how many other things about altars that I did not even know myself hallelujah now write this down please altars can be physical monuments altars can be institutions altars can be men altars can be non-material platforms i'll take it again altars can be physical monuments like we have in the bible and um you know altars can be institutions that means a whole institution can be an altar altars can be men human entities can be altars and then altars can be non-material platforms that means a platform that is spiritual in context you cannot find any material expression to it and yet it exists are we learning i wrote down here the patriarchs commanded superior levels of dominion on earth because they understood the mystery of altars the patriarchs those who had gone before us commanded superior levels of dominion on earth because they understood the mystery of altars and like i've told you altars allow all kinds of spirits to find expression on earth and to find expression among men altars allow all kinds of spirits to find expression on earth and to find expression among men is someone learning already listen let me tell you the truth if god grants us grace and we understand this revelation and pray the prayers we are praying tonight you will marvel and wonder at the levels of results that you begin to command in your christian life an individual can be a victim of negative altars we're coming there don't write just listen a church can be a victim of negative altars a nation can be a victim of altars individuals businesses and corporations can be victims of altars write this down please the major assignment of an altar the major assignment of an altar is to give authorization please underline it if you are writing using a pen the major assignment of an altar is to give authorization and continuity to any spiritual activity on earth whether godly or demonic i'll take it again this is a major point i'm expressing now please don't forget this the major assignment of an altar is to give authorization and to give continuity to any spiritual activity on earth whether it is godly or it is demonic that is the primary assignment of altars the major assignment of an altar is to give authorization and continuity to any spiritual activity on earth whether godly or demonic please look up do you understand the meaning of this 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 point i just stated that the assignment of an altar is number one to give authorization to a spiritual activity but number two to give continuity that means anything that is recurrent and remains is powered by an altar this immediately becomes the litmus test to check the presence of altars good or bad are we together please don't forget this one this will be a the foundation of our discussion the major assignment of an altar is to give authorization and continuity to any spiritual activity on earth whether godly or demonic every time god made promises or made a covenant or said he was going to do something to the patriarchs and to their children immediately they would build an altar so that even when they were not there there would be a platform for the continuity of that statement 
is somebody learning now write this down please you can know the presence of an altar you can know the presence of an altar in any life any family and any region you can know the presence of an altar in any life any family and any region by the consistency of patterns and occurrences you can know the presence of an altar in any life any family and any region by the consistency of patterns and occurrences whether good or bad this is powerful the consistency of patterns the consistency of occurrences whether they are good or bad is the scriptural litmus test for the presence of an altar wow you can know the presence of an altar in any life in any family in any region that means if certain good things keep happening to you regardless the surrounding circumstances there is an altar that is powering that that is happening if certain evils and certain patterns keep reoccurring regardless the effort you are putting is because it is being powered by altars is someone listening for example salvation salvation is being powered by an altar that is why any day and any time anyone confesses jesus you don't have to be there an angel does not have to be there to supervise it there is an altar already that supports that ordinance that whosoever believes in the name of the lord that person shall be saved and the altar that powers that statement is the very throne that god sits on are we together now yes that means you don't need to travel from america to nigeria to be saved like to give your life to jesus christ regardless location regardless time regardless age regardless gender you can listen to a message of tl osborne even though the man has died but the message is powered by an altar because the truth is communicating there is from the word of god and if you believe that message you can repent there and give your life to jesus and the altar that was connected to that statement makes that statement true in your life immediately if salvation were not powered by an altar it would be impossible for all men to be saved another example the blessing of the jewish nation the blessing of the jewish nation is powered by altars that is why some of them as individuals today as a nation when you go to israel many of them still practice judaism but in truth many of them are not born again they have not believed in the lord god of heaven yet that covenant being powered by an altar still insists that the Jewish nation will remain on top and above. Whether they are in Israel or they are in Africa, whether they know it or not, they just find out that you can stand with a Jew and there seems to be an advantage that he himself cannot explain. The power of altars. Please pay attention because we will soon come to the one that concerns Africa. Are we together? Look up please salvation is powered by an altar that is why jesus does not have to come physically and start running from room to room and say look at me i'm the jesus you are talking about are you interested from one position and one location the effect becomes the same everywhere his name is called now an example of negative altars are you ready the one we saw is an example of positive altars an example of negative altars all kinds of wrong addictions all kinds of negative patterns are powered by altars 
all kinds of wrong addictions please write all kinds of negative patterns are only there and remain because there are altars that power them let me list a few of them for you listen if i am listing this and it ever affects you just know that whether you admit it or not it confirms the presence of an altar are you ready number one it mysterious diseases and infirmities the presence of mysterious diseases and infirmities whether as an individual or a family or a territory powered by altars mysterious diseases and infirmities usually these diseases you see are also passed through the bloodline father had it mother had it brothers had it now there may be a medical explanation and medicine is there as a symbol of god's mercy but i am telling you using higher spiritual intelligence those sicknesses can only remain because of the presence of altars number two all kinds of sexual perversions please write all kinds of sexual and immoral perversions are powered by altars it does not matter how sincere the victims are that's not the issue is that there is an altar that powers it all kinds of sexual perversions that's why you can hear of stories of an adult you know doing something funny with a minor and a baby and it does not make human sense but this is about altars i'm sorry to say it but this is also what has generated into these various versions of perversions we have in our society the victims do not even know what is drawing them that's the point i'm trying to tell you it's not just about your will alone is that there is a force that is operating on legal basis number three depression and mental health issues most of these depression and mental health issues now there are things that have to do with fatigue and all of that but for most people they do not know that most mental health issues need more than counseling it is the presence of an altar when jesus saw madmen listen watch what the madman in gadara notice what the spirit did he was always hiding in caves and hurting himself depression and mental health issues number four witchcraft and idol worship here you go witchcraft and idol worship you will be amazed at how many christians today love god sincerely but something keeps drawing them back to still revisit foundations of idolatry it does not matter whether you're a man of god it does not matter whether you're a businessman there's something in you that still makes you comfortable there's one small portrait in the village that was kept there it was handed from great grandfather to grandfather and they said if you speak to that portrait it can bring results you can serve god and give but when the going gets tough as you travel to the village as you are passing you just see that thing and something within you witchcraft and idol worship look up please there are you've you've seen us pray for these people during miracle services there are many people some of you looking at me right now based on the ordinances of priesthood you are supposed to be the one they hand over some of those things to but you just said i've given my life to jesus christ i'm not interested and the altar said it's not about whether you are interested or not find out how i came into being first and you just generally sweep it under the carpet and he says all right you go and you find out all kinds of things begin to happen i'm not scaring you there is victory at the end of this teaching but you must know what is there you don't gain victory by running away from the truth you gain victory by knowing the truth stagnation and delays altars stagnation and delays altars believe me altars
near success syndrome have you seen that happen to people I, I look for a word there's there's no better word that captures it the way i want if i bring all this english you will not really get it i need you to get it the way it is near success syndrome that people see it but never possess it there are people like that you do an interview to the last point then you don't go again you start a business and negotiate to the last point then you don't go again you will always see the beginning of things but never see the end of them it's an altar believe me you can look around and know people in your life who are excellent starters but the power to continue and even finish anything is not there they can start 30 businesses they will never be able to keep one past two or three months they can start different companies they can even start ministries and yet it does not work altars barrenness and short-lived success barrenness of all kinds especially biological barrenness now and short-lived success short-lived success that means you enjoy every blessing but it does not last there are some of you here the moment you see good things happen to you, you even start crying because you know as a track record that good things never remain you buy a car as soon as you are rejoicing in two weeks that car will now hit a convoy are we together they will bring you out and say you should sit down on the ground first and you find what is wrong with me as soon as you are preparing to go abroad your visa just comes out next thing you will see police they will say theft was happening somewhere and they join you with all those to interrogate for the next two months your passport has been seized until you find out what is going on i know you may be laughing but pay attention short-lived success barrenness how many people do you find Th there's nothing medically wrong with them there is no reason why they should not have children some of them may go as far as getting pregnant and if you ask them and they are honest they will tell you about their experiences somewhere within that pregnancy period here come strangers visitors in the night either molesting them or doing some kind of thing and that ends it there are many more expressions but these ones are some of the major expressions can i be sincere with you there are pastors who are victims of altars there are families that are victims of altars this thing does not necessarily have to do with being a wicked person or being kind this is why god is granting us spiritual intelligence God is my witness and I lie not. Years ago, I traveled somewhere and I met someone. I asked him, what does he do? And he says he works with a security company, PhD. God is my witness. I mean it. PhD. And out of frustration, he said he, he can't leave his family like this. He has to just find a way. I said, no, now this, this cannot be God because in terms of value that person has paid his price do you agree with me on that so it's not about laziness i know someone who got a huge contract the person was so happy and was rejoicing just when they mobilized them a bit he now secured a loan from the bank to add it and began the contract and they revoked it ABCD, we discovered your documents are not complete and they left that person with a pile of debt with the bank. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything that is not of God and everything being powered by any altar, this is the night where we will scatter it once and for all. Please sit down. Hallelujah.
so you know the presence of an altar in a life by the continuity of patterns and occurrences not to play with your mind but great grandmother was raped grandmother was raped mother was raped different scenarios the same effect it is more than just coincidences you are the only one who is calling it coincidences have you seen people who spend 10 15 years abroad even 20 years and you go and find them in the village sitting down and you are saying sir tell me the story they will tell you in 19 this and that i was in america i was a friend with the mayor i was a friend with this one i even got an award they will take you back to enter into that clay house and show you all the things and you are saying from whence come this poverty and he said my dear son you don't know and the young man will be gyrating just a fresh born again person and say it doesn't matter i pity you and return back 10 years later to that same place and wonder what is wrong listen how many of you know about a man called jabez in the bible ladies imagine if jabez was your life partner no, no 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 don't insult the guy he won at the end of it i'm just saying imagine you would be surprised that after dancing and rejoicing you start going down and not know why can i tell you this these are some of the things that prophets detect by prophecy and because many of them respectfully speaking are not sound in the world they call the victims witches and wizards they are just detecting the presence of altars but it does not mean the individuals are necessarily bad it is true association can help you partake of altars that is upon the lives of people too oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes when the realm of the spirit is against you it will also be against anything that supports you when god was against jonah remember jonah chapter one jonah was running away he simply entered a boat all the people who were the passengers there did not know that such and such a person now forget who was against him the most important thing is that the realm of the spirit was against him you would think he only jumped into the belly of the fish alone but they had lost things because of one person the same way jesus was inside a boat and those who would have died were preserved because of his presence do you know the meaning of that it means because of what you are learning tonight everybody around you will now finally be a partaker of this blessing in the name of jesus christ the formula always remains that when he sends a word to Jacob, he intends that it lightens upon Israel. So for some of you, as you are listening right now, the Holy Ghost is telling you, this is what I've been trying to tell you. Are you seeing what kept mama down? Are you seeing what kept your dad? What kept your siblings? Now you are the reed that God is taking out of fire. It's important to pay attention for the sake of those who have gone ahead of you and for the sake of those who are coming. Please sit down. Go and read the history of America and find out that when they are about, where that nation was about to be born, they erected an altar and called upon the name of the Lord officially and said, God, we are officially saying you are the God. That's why regardless what happens, that altar still speaks. Because based on the law of cause and effect, many nations should not be where they are economically yet there is an altar that seems to veto these limitations hallelujah now please look up many of our forefathers great grandfathers in and territories from the sincerity of their heart many of them out of fear of being victims of wars poverty and whatever many of them went to meet the devil because it was these deities that many of them knew and so they met them on legal basis and had all kinds of fraternities and partnerships 
and different altars were enacted today the people who were part of that program are long gone but altar does not know time no 10 years is only 10 years to you 200 years is only 200 years to you read your bible where jacob had an encounter in chapter 28 that was where abraham built an altar abraham built an altar there now his great grandson his, his great his um great grandson came there and slept in the night whether he slept or not that altar was working every day it just so happened that he now slept and found something that was already there was a procession angels ascending and descending is someone learning altars can affect individuals altars can affect families the same way the same way authentic godly altars listen there are many many people who turn their homes into altars they were not very born again but they supported missionaries they turned spaces in their houses to become a place for missionaries to come and stay during crusades they did not know what they were doing and some of those missionaries prayed there in their silence and said oh god i am praying that long after i am gone let the great grandchildren of these people not know shame since they supported the gospel you will find one rough boy one day roaming around not being interested in jesus and the speakings from that altar will come and fish him he will find his way to a crusade ground and you'll be wondering what happened have you seen many people who are not serious with god and yet it seems like god cannot leave them they will run away you will still find them when you want to prophesy they are the first you will bring out and they are not serious you yourself will be annoyed and say what is this thing that god is always looking for them how altars work let's hurry up now pay attention i want to show you a mystery i want to show you how altars work ah, may god give us understanding let me tell you you see this our fathers of faith the level of results they are commanding believe me if you think it is just based on intellect think again you see this our nation and africa the kind of trouble we are in if you think it's just a political trouble think again do you not see the consistency of the operations regardless what government comes it is an altar my dear people more than just who is there or who is not there do you not see what happens to people during election it's as if something just comes on people and nobody knows what he's doing until after everything, everybody starts complaining. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. How does altars work? How does an altar work? Please write this down. All satanic altars are powered by one major altar. All satanic altars are powered by one major altar. And I want to reveal it to you now. All satanic altars, systems of authorization, systems of communication, right? They are powered by one major access point or one major altar. Now, forgive me to make reference to my dear film, Lord of the Rings, remember that our movie? Now, remember, if you've not watched it, I don't know what to tell you, but you just follow. God will grant you understanding. Remember, uh, I, I hope I understand the film really very well, but I know that there were many rings that were given to kings, and then there was one ring. Is that true? That powers the remaining other rings. This is what I'm trying to teach you. That all other altars are at the mercy of this one altar that means no matter what you do to all other altars if this one altar still remain you wasted your time 
now this is the mistake that most people have that they just keep rebuking things individually poverty this one that one all satanic altars are powered by one major altar pay attention now it's called the altar of sin and iniquity write it down please judges chapter 6 and verse 1 the altar of sin and iniquity this is the altar that powers every other satanic altar and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and the Lord delivered them into the hands of Midian seven years what was the cause of the problem evil in the sight of the Lord the altar of sin and iniquity and hold on before you assume any self-righteousness i want to tell you there are different levels of sin there is your personal sin when it has to do with altars there are territorial sins and there are sins that come from bloodlines so don't be too quick to just stand with self-righteousness and say it does not concern me the the altar of sin and iniquity hosea chapter 7 and verse 1 i found this scripture and it blessed me so powerfully look up please let me let me let me read it for you when i would have healed israel then the iniquity of ephraim was discovered and the wickedness of samaria i was about to come and heal them but there was something that was discovered when i would have healed israel the iniquity of ephraim was discovered romans chapter 5 from verse 12 to 14 romans chapter 5 the bible says wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin are we together now look how serious this issue of death is and yet he's saying death had to wait for sin to enter to authorize it to come in he says so then death passed upon all men for all have sinned we're reading to 14 13 now for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law 14 now this scripture blessed me so much nevertheless he said death reigned it didn't just come it now came and even reigned from adam to moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of adam's transgression do you know what this means this is he's talking about us now the effect of that original seed it came and reigned even after them that had not sinned after the similitude of adam's transgression who is the figure of him who is to come the altar of sin and iniquity John chapter 9 from verse 1 and 2 John chapter 9 the Bible says and as Jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from his birth now hear what the disciples said verse 2 and his disciples asked him saying master who did sin are you seeing the disciples they went straight to the issue that they believed would have been the cause remember these guys had been under the mentorship of jesus this man's condition there must be something that has authorized satan he said who seen this man or his parents there was something they had known about the teaching of jesus some versions will say who seen him or his father because the word father means source so is it him or his background both of them can create an effect in his life. Who sinned? I wrote down here, just for your quick learning, three levels of sin. With respect, with respect to the activity of altars, three levels of sin. Number one, personal sin. Personal sin. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 8 personal sin three levels of sin if we say that we have no sin 
we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us period the bible states it very clearly unmistakable there number two territorial sin territorial sin that means your personal sin you can repent before god but there is territorial sin a territory can sin against god an example sodom and gomorrah genesis 18 from verse 21 sodom and gomorrah was not just a personal sin he appears to abraham we are reading to 22 to, to 23 i will go down and see whether they have done all together according to the crowd in fact let's start from 20. let's start from 20. he says the lord said because the cry of sodom and gomorrah is great and because their sin as a territory is very grievous uh-huh i will go down and see whether they have done together according to the cry of it which is come to me if not i will know verse 22 it says and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards sodom but abraham stood yet with the lord one last verse and abraham drew, drew near and said will thou also destroy the righteous and the wicked that means in that city they were righteous and wicked people the righteous man being lot yet as far as god was concerned as a territory they were sinners statistics show sadly that nigeria is ranked one of the highest among corrupt nations are you corrupt but it's, it's a sad badge we have to wear nationally speaking is that true no matter how righteous you are the whatever lash we have to receive by reason of carrying a nigerian passport we all corporately no matter how individually righteous we are you have to face that backlash until as a territory we are changed are you getting what i'm saying now sodom and gomorrah a territory can sin another example jonah chapter 1 nineveh nineveh jonah chapter 1 and verse 3 and then we'll go to chapter 3 from verse 1 to 3 jonah chapter 1 and verse jonah chapter 1 verse 1 now the word of the lord came to jonah the son of amittai saying we're reading to verse 3 arise go to nineveh that great city and cry against cry against what the city cry against the city for their wickedness is come up before me verse 3 uh, you know what happened to jonah jonah ran away and all the story that happened in disobedience and you know that jonah was angry because he said lord i know these people you are right if i talk to them now and they repent that means a territory can repent of their sins are we together chapter 3 and verse 1 now jonah came out of the belly of the fish verse 1 now 3 verse 1 and the word of the lord came to jonah the second time saying we're reading to verse 3 arise go to nineveh that great city and preach unto it the preaching that i bid thee that means what i told you go and tell them there is authorization from darkness to destroy you based on that altar of sin and iniquity and if you don't do anything about it judgment is coming what happened verse 3 so jonah arose and went on to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord it says now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey later on we are going to be reading what happened because as soon as Jonah announced that the Bible says they declared a fast plus the animals everything that was alive fasted to repent if I stole money and I bought cassava with it and a goat eats it territorially we are all sinners so the animals fasted it's in your bible praise the lord so there's territorial sin the last level of sin is seen based on foundations and bloodlines 
please write it down don't worry don't be afraid of hearing all these words i know you've had them and you've run away from them for a long time you just trust me i'm a good pilot sin based on foundations and bloodlines don't forget these three levels of sin personal sin territorial sin and then sin that is based on foundation and bloodline psalms 11 and verse 3 it says if the foundation be destroyed what can the not what can men do even the righteous will be affected exodus chapter 34 from verse 6 exodus 34 and verse 6 watch this now and the lord passed before him and proclaimed the lord the lord god merciful and gracious long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth next verse keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin and that will by no means clear the guilty he says visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation uh-huh he says and moses made haste and bowed his head and worship next verse he says moses now if i have found grace we're reading to 14 in your sight O lord i pray thee go among us for it is a stiff-necked people and pardon our iniquity are you seeing moses repenting and asking the lord he said this one is not just for myself i i agree with what with what you have said verse 10. he says okay let's go to verse 9. watch this moses is pleading now on behalf of his people he says and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for your inheritance how did god respond to that issue verse 10 please and he said behold i make a covenant before all thy people i will do marvels such as have not seen done in all the earth nor in any nation and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the lord for it is a terrible thing that i will do with thee reading to 14 verse 11 now quickly observe thou that observe thou that which i command thee this day behold i will drive out before thee the amorites the canaanites the hittites the perizzites the hevites the jebusites uh-huh take heed to yourself lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest let it be for a snare in the midst of thee verse 13 but ye shall destroy their is that in your bible i want to do business now that you are begging me now that you are pleading with me to have mercy let me show you what you need to do it's not just the issue of pleading there are things that will keep speaking you shall destroy their altars break their images and cut down their groves last verse for thou shalt worship no other god for the lord whose name is jealous wow I only used to read that he's a jealous God and he's saying the Lord whose name not negative satanic jealousy let's not confuse what is written here jealousy just means that ability to want to see that which you love protected and preserved that there is something about God when he sees that spiritual halotry from God to God and when sin and iniquity creates that altar we, people bring judgment upon themselves personal sin territorial sin please look up whether you like it or not we are all victims of territorial sin and if not all of us especially Africa bloodline foundations do you believe that you will hear of a story of somebody who buried human beings every day and then you just shrug it off and say it does not matter do you know what the people said before they passed on and you just believe oh no problem everything is gone no there are rules of engagement 
I've taught you this when we're dealing with deliverance, that even the sin of man, God did not cast it out of man. As powerful as God is, he didn't cast sin out of man. The lamb had to come and die, lived 33 years, died to purchase redemption for us. Is someone following? Now, just like demonic altars, all godly altars are powered by one major altar too. Have I lost you? All godly altars are powered by one major altar. That means if you see any platform that has been available to men to encounter God, to authorize activities of the realm of the spirit, there is one major altar that powers them all. The Bible calls it the throne of grace. The throne of grace alongside the blood of Jesus that is called the eternal covenant. That is the principal altar that powers everything good in the life of the believer. Please do not forget this. Every system of authorization, every system of exchange, every system that allows for interaction with the angelic, with the Holy Spirit, every system that commands spiritual virtues to come upon the saints is powered by this one altar, the throne of grace. Hebrews chapter 4, please, from verse 4 to 16. If you're following, please say amen. amen. 14, I meant to say, Hebrews 4, 14. 14 to 16. Hebrews 4, 14. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest, that is passed into the heavens jesus the son of god he said let us hold fast our profession 15 now for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity but was in all points tempted like us yet without sin 16 let us therefore come boldly unto that throne of grace he says we will obtain mercy and we will find grace to help in time of need. Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12, please. From verse 22 to 24. Please write these scriptures down. But ye are come to Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Next verse. To the general assembly the church of the firstborn which are written in heaven and to god the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect 24 now it says unto jesus hallelujah the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood that he used you see that now the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of abel you read what Paul was teaching that Jesus carried his own blood as the high priest and poured it upon that altar once and for all. If you ever see any, any believer in Christ walking consistently in favor, walking consistently in grace, walking consistently in victory, having divine encounters, those are different altars and platforms that make for that possibility. But the one altar that powers it all is the throne of grace. That throne you see God sitting on is an altar. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one will. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 oh. God can you imagine that he sits on an altar an altar that ensures that what he says 
if you believe it and you access it and you see every other person who has tried to put together an altar will eventually die but there is he that liveth and abideth The throne of grace is an altar. It is the throne of grace that powers that altar of prayer, the altar of favor. Every platform that allows you to receive of any spiritual blessing is powered by this one altar. The same way every demonic occurrence around families, territories and nations is powered principally by the altar of sin and iniquity is someone learning already hebrews chapter 13 20 and 21 hebrews 13 20 and 21 now the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant 21 the same way that blood even made a way for jesus christ to return from the dead it says make you perfect in every good work to do his will that means whatever needs to make you go forward there is an altar that insists that the provision is there for you this is very powerful every time you come to jesus and hand over your life to him more than just receiving of his life you subscribe to the covenant of that altar are we together yes so it does not matter what altars it does not matter what demonic things it does not matter whether my grandfather or great-grandfather whether my region worship idols it does not matter what it is one thing is that the moment you become connected to that one altar that throne of grace through the blood of the eternal covenant how to raise and maintain altars you don't have to cry cuz i have paid the price i plead the blood i plead the blood i plead the blood i plead the blood the blood the blood i plead the blood i plead the blood eternal saving blood i don't have to cry for you have paid the price one more time here i plead the blood 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 the blood, eternal saving love. I don't have to cry, for you have paid the price. One minute recap on everything we have said. We said how that an altar is a system of authorization. An altar is a platform that allows the realm of the spirit to interact with the physical realm. And that an altar also allows for laws and spirits to find expression. And that, that an altar is what empowers and activates covenants and keeps them alive. Hallelujah. We did say how that the major assignment of altars is to give authorization and continuity to any spiritual activity on earth whether it is godly or demonic and we agreed that you can test the presence of altars in a life a family a business a region through the consistency of patterns 
and occurrences whether they be negative or positive we discuss how altars work that all demonic altars are powered by one major system of authorization the altar of sin and iniquity and that all godly manifestations you call them altars systems platforms that allow for the victory of the saints they are empowered by this one altar called the throne of grace alongside the blood of the eternal covenant now how to raise and how to maintain altars this also doubles to teach you how to tear down altars every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome every high every high thing must come down You overcome. You overcome. One more time. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold. You wear. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Listen. Some of you, by reason of this teaching and the prayers that will follow shortly, you will rewrite the narratives of your families. Believe me when I tell you this that what they said has not been done it is with gallancy and victory you will do it that nobody in your family can rise and you have seen it happen now with this knowledge you will hold it like a key and clear those altars to give you room we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in honor of you lord we will raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we will sing in honor of you can i tell you the truth every man you see who has become a champion found a way to put those altars down everybody pastor listen this may be the key you've been looking for why is it that ministry does not work when the altars go down the result will speak you will see it and you will know that victory has come please pray in the spirit in one minute before i teach you how to raise altars Shabragate palakatos kate la katos yata. Manda brande ke paratos kate la kapras kate balata. Those watching, make sure you are praying. Connect from your homes. Connect from any region. Behold, I show you a mystery. In the name of Jesus, please sit down. I'm excited in my spirit right please how to raise altars how to tear down altars how to maintain altars now please write today we do not raise altars by erecting physical structures or monuments today for the new believer in Christ now we do not raise altars by erecting physical structures and monuments necessarily that means you don't have to go and stand somewhere and start carving things putting blocks together to look for no now that does not mean you cannot dedicate a place say for instance to meet with god like a prayer room or something no that's not what i'm we're not talking that is still scriptural that you can find a place to spend with God but that today we do not raise altars by erecting physical structures and monuments necessarily to know how to erect structures structures that work with power and grace we have to learn from one of the great patriarchs Elijah first Kings 18 
we're going to learn how to erect altars from the man elijah let's start from verse 19 for sake of time this was at this was a point of decadence where the purposes of god had suffered a great deal under jezebel and ahab and now this great prophet of god arose called elisha elijah the tishbite and he's about to judge the prophets in the encounter that we know to be the encounter of fire at mount carmel let's read pay attention as we learn the lesson now therefore he said send and gather to me all israel unto mount carmel and the prophets of baal 450 and the prophets of the groves 400 and so on and so forth next verse so ahab sent unto all the children of israel and they gathered the prophets and they came to mount carmel follow closely now elijah came and all the people and said how long will ye hold between two opinions if the lord be god follow him but if baal then follow him and the people answered him not a word next verse elijah said unto the people i even only you see the mistake this one is a mistake clearly he made as a prophet he said i only remain a prophet of the lord but baal's prophets are 450 men 23 let them therefore now watch this he's building an altar now look at the ingredients or the requirements let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it into pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under and i will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire uh-huh and ye call upon the name of your god and i will call upon the name of the lord and the god that answered by fire let him be god and all the people answered and said it is well spoken both the prophets of baal and elijah knew that without altars any other thing they were trying to do and call will be a total waste of time elijah said unto the prophets he says choose you for yourself and call upon the name of your god put no fire under uh-huh and they took the bullock and then when they had put everything they had dressed it they now began to call oh bell hear us but there was no voice nor any that answered and they leaped upon where look at the various skills they were doing but it was on the altar which was made so they made an altar 26 or 27 now and it came to pass at noon that elijah mocked them and said cry aloud for he is a god either he is talking or he is pursuing or he is in a journey or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awaked 28 and they cried aloud and caught themselves after their manner did you see that that means there was a way they caught themselves as a last card that when they try everything on that altar and it does not work there is a skill they taught them that you can cut yourself and they tried it they lacerated themselves till blood gushed out upon them 29 and it came to pass when the midday was past and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded 30 verse 30 and elijah said unto the people come near unto me and all the people came near unto him step number one he repaired the altar of the lord that was broken down follow carefully while looking at the protocol to be able to set up an altar something happened to have given Baal that kind of authority and Elijah now wanting to see the power of God the first thing he did was to repair the altar of the Lord that was broken down reading to 39 let's hurry up 31 and Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of jacob unto whom the word of the lord came saying israel shall be thy name so he did not just gather stones carelessly 
the stones were according to the word of the Lord and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord and he made a stretch about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed 33 and he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said fill four barrels with water and he poured it on the bond sacrifice and on the wood 34 and he said do it a second time and he did it a second time and he said do it the third time and they did it the third time uh-huh and the water ran about the altar and he filled the trench also with water 36 and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. 37. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again 38 then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the bond sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that is in the strange and all when all the people saw it they fell on their faces and they said the Lord he is God the Lord he is God how to raise an altar pay attention number one the Bible says Elisha repaired Elijah repaired the altar that was broken many people miss this step in raising an altar most people emphasize on other things and forget the place of repentance and brokenness please write it down that is what it means to repair the altar of the Lord that has been broken you want to raise an altar that can authorize spiritual activities again it cannot be without repentance and brokenness please write it down can I tell you whether it is as an individual, whether as a family, whether as a territory. You want to see the power of God come again. You want to see the realm of the spirit work in partnership with the purposes of God over the lives of the saints. It starts with genuine brokenness and repentance. Not confession, not declaration, not prophecy, not giving. Repentance unfortunately and respectfully so most times even men of God when we are teaching people these things we do not teach them the place of repentance and brokenness is someone learning this is very 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 powerful genuine repentance and genuine brokenness remember what Moses did as soon as the Lord told him I mean um, Moses when he told him about the judgment coming upon the people, he began to plead for mercy, even for them. Let me show you a scripture. Second Samuel 24. We'll read verse 1, then we'll jump to verse 10. The Bible says, And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go number Israel and Judah. So he made a big mistake. Let's go to verse 10. And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. Watch this now. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have in that which I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. Say repentance, say brokenness. We are reading. Please continue. 11 now it says for when david was up in the morning the word of the lord came unto the prophet god david seer saying 20 verse 12 now go and say to david 
thus saith the lord i offer thee three things choose thee one of them that i may do it unto you that means god is saying i'm going to deal with you but i'm going to give you three options verse 13 number one god came to david and told him all of this punishment number one seven years of famine shall come upon thee in the land or will thou flee three months before your enemies while they pursue you or number th or shall there be three days pestilence in the land now advise and see what answer i shall return to him that sent me so david these are the three punishments you are going to receive watch this now 14. david said unto god i am in a great strait let us fall now into the hand of the lord what a wise man for his mercies are great and let me not fall into the hand of man ah. you're not a man no you're not a man no. you're the god who opens doors no man can shut you're not a man no you're not a man David is saying, I rather fall into the hands of my creator. I know man. These people will kill me without mercy. Please keep that scripture. Verse 15. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan, even to Beersheba, 70,000 men. Is that in your Bible? 70,000 men. 70,000 men. We're going to visit that later on when I talk about the other aspects. I'm just showing you that if you want to rebuild the altar of the Lord, it must first start with genuine repentance the bible says if my people you know we use this scripture all around but we don't even understand what it means nigeria let me tell you sincerely if all our strength and i'm saying this with all due respect and honor if all our strength is on men to change this nation let us think again we have sinned against god as a nation even if you have not seen as a person we have to take responsibility as a nation to say lord from men of god to politicians to business people to those in government to all of us insulting everybody we need to break down and say lord it is only you that can show us mercy and if you do not show us mercy vain is the help of man we need to rebuild the altar of the lord our nation is not the first to be in turmoil go and read about sodom and gomorrah they did not repent and judgment came upon them and wiped them how about nineveh as soon as nineveh had that from the king to everyone and the animals they came no complaining no self-righteousness lord we agree and Jonah even got angry. He said, Lord, I know you. This is why I refuse to go there. Because I know some of the people these guys killed. And I, I'm hoping I will not bring this message so that they, you will punish them for me. And now they have repented. Can I tell you the truth? For as long as the altar of sin and iniquity is empowered in this nation, in Africa, in our homes, everywhere, we will not be able to see the power and the grace and the glory of God. Genuine repentance. There are fathers who must take responsibility over their families and their children to end certain negative patterns. Father, I come from a family of idol worship. Now you have given me four, five, six children. I know what I suffered by reason of being there. But I stand on behalf of this territory and I take responsibility under God and I plead for mercy. Don't say it does not matter. For as long as there is no mercy, nothing stops the judgment of God from landing on anybody and anything. Are we together? Hallelujah. 
Number two, the Bible says he set up 12 stones. Set up 12 stones according to the 12 tribes of Israel. That talks of covenant. And he says he did that according to the word God gave him. So you can put in other words, the second ingredient that was needed to rebuild that altar is the word of God. The promises of God. What did he say? Upon what guarantee are you standing? The word of God. The promises of God. Number one, brokenness and repentance. Number two, the word of God. Are you ready for number three? There are many other ingredients that were there, but that which is an interest to us, number three, is sacrifice. And there are three levels of sacrifice. Sacrifice. So there are three very important things, components, that were present upon that altar. There are others like water and wood that talks about service and all of that, but I'm not into all those ones now. My concern is repentance and brokenness. Number two, to return back to the place of value and honor to the word of God. And then number three, to engage the power of sacrifice. And I said there are three levels. Watch this now. The first sacrifice that must be put upon the altar is you. Romans 12 and verse 1. Until you become that living sacrifice, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies. Is that in your Bible? A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of worship. Where do you present it? On that altar. Jesus was teaching and he says, when you are going to give your offering and you find out you've offended your brother, he says, leave it at the altar. So that's where you were taking it to. You must become that sacrifice yourself. Everything about you and everything about your life. Please look up. I'm showing you how to rebuild altars. And it also doubles as how to tear down altars. If our fathers worship idols, if our grandfathers, if our territories worship idols, it's not enough to just return to the Lord territorially. You as a person must come and say, I make a conscious decision. My life and everything belongs to you. The second sacrifice that God demands from us in building altars is our praise and our worship. Our praise and our worship. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. Hebrews 13 and 15. It says, by him therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise unto God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. You want to rebuild an altar that restores all things? The sacrifice of praise and the sacrifice of worship. No wonder Paul and Silas were wise people. They didn't sing because they were musicians. It was a mystery. They didn't care who was listening to them. They didn't care about their vocal competence. All they were doing was to sing. And they created a portal from that prison that touched the heavens. And God came down in response. Do you not notice that this was a formula that was given the nation of Israel? Every time they were fighting a battle and it looked like defeat was imminent, they would keep their swords and begin to sing. You are good and your mercies endure forever. Is it in your Bible? They keep singing it and chanting it and you will see God move like a mighty warrior and begin to bring confusion in the camp of the enemy. Your worship. The third sacrifice is your prayers. This is a major sacrifice that must always be on your altar. Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 13. The ministry of prayer, like sacrifice upon the altar. It says, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall not go out. Prayer. 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 
when you see those who practice divination and wizardry and all of that they are always there making enchantments and making sure that these altars are serviced by sacrifices of prayers to all kinds of deities the sacrifice of yourself your life the sacrifice of your worship and praise the sacrifice of prayers and then the sacrifice of a seed giving and i'm going to teach you how to use this because many people do not know many people just drop money and i i i i, I submit to you that sometimes even we men of god maybe because it's money just because you are bringing money and dropping it does not mean that you are dropping a seed and a sacrifice i don't care how much there is a consciousness and there is an understanding that must support what you are doing because seeds have different voices in the realm of the spirit are we together to rebuild an altar number one that altar must be repaired talks of repentance and brokenness number two restoration of the word of the lord the promises of god you must get back to live by the word of god not to live by the ordinances of tradition not to live over some kind of um, demonic template number three the sacrifice of yourself the sacrifice of your worship the sacrifice of your prayers the sacrifice of your seed and then the final key to raising an altar is prophetic decrees and blessings prophetic decrees and blessings now we're going to finish up we're going to finish up um give us first kings 18 33 then we'll finish up second samuel we're about to pray now something is going to happen in this place now first kings 18 33 he said put the wood in order and then cut the bullock into pieces on the wood and fill the barrels with water and pour it upon the bond offering his sacrifice was in place first before he called upon the God of heaven this is the same thing that happened when Solomon was dedicating the temple also there was an altar there was already sacrifice upon it and then he began to pray and call upon the God of heaven and bless the people and the cloud of his presence came and filled that place second Samuel 24 let's continue from where we stopped I think it was from verse we had verse 15 let's finish it now this is David so the lord sent a pestilence upon israel from morning even to the time appointed and there dried there died the people from dan to beersheba seventy thousand men uh-huh and when the angel stretched out his hand upon jerusalem to destroy it the lord repented him of the evil and said unto the angel that destroyed the people it is enough stay now thy hand and the angel of the Lord was at the threshing place of Arauna, the Jebusite. Uh huh. Watch this carefully now. And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned and I have done wickedly. But this sheep, what have they done? What a good leader. Let thy hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house in other words spare these innocent people because of my wrong i have given access and seventy thousand people have died 18. and prophet god came that day to david and said unto him go up rear an altar i want to show you a mystery right now something has authorized satan to destroy this and even though you have confessed and repented that is not enough he said, go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Arauna, the Jebusite. 19. So David did according to the saying of God and went up as the Lord commanded. Uh-huh, we're reading to 25. And Arauna looked and saw the king and his servants coming towards him. And Arauna went out and bowed himself before the king on his face to the ground. Next verse. 
and Arauna said wherefore is my lord the king come to his servant and David said to buy the threshing floor of thee to build an altar unto the Lord that the plague may be stayed that the cause may be stayed that the patterns may be stayed that the reoccurrences may be stayed from the people 22 and Arauna said unto David let my lord the king take and offer up what seemed good unto him behold here is even oxen for you and here are threshing instruments you know what the guy said i have come to you dear king i respect you i mean it's an honor for you to come you don't need to do anything take the threshing floor take a bullock and even take all the instruments 23 all these things did around her as the king give unto the king and around her said unto the king the lord thy god accept thee 24 watch this and the king said unto Arauna, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which does not cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver, 25. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings of peace and peace offerings so the lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed from israel please look up let me tell you the truth you can live on earth and fail woefully give your life to christ and in the sweet by and by go to heaven but as far as dominion and authority upon the earth is concerned you will never be able to excel without an altar genesis chapter 8 let me show you something you may have read but not understood verse 20 we're about to pray 8 20 noah built an altar please look up as soon as noah came out there was no place of Noah rejoicing and saying, Ah, thank God, I survived the flood. As soon as he came out, the first thing he did was to build an altar unto the Lord. And he took of every clean beast, watch this, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offering on the altar, 21. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord made a proclamation by reason of that. I will not again curse the ground for man's sake for the imagination of his heart is evil from his youth neither will I again smite any more everything that is living as I have done now look up please he said verse 22 while the earth remains do you know what he's saying seed time and harvest cold and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease to them that understand the altar the basis for his speaking was over the man who had raised an altar and he's teaching here that all of these prophetic manifestations revolve around the understanding of an altar the power to restrain evil is captured in the understanding of this system of altars this is very very powerful many preachers do not know this and the only thing you just do is to get up and say God called me God bless you you start a church and find out nothing is happening many business people especially those who come from families where nothing is happening let me tell you the truth whatever you see that is not working right in your life your family your territory the first thing is not to go around understanding the names of demons and all of that that may not be necessary the most important thing is for you to know that there is a principal altar that has powered all the causes all of these infirmities all of these demonic things and it is called the altar of sin and iniquity are we together your first assignment 
in tearing down altars is to rebuild an altar to the Lord over that family. You don't do it by a physical monument. It is an understanding and a spiritual approach. I told you that an altar can also be a non-material platform. Lord, I stand this day and in the name of Jesus Christ, on this day, I am standing to repent on behalf of my family, on behalf of all of this. Do you know that was what Job kept doing for his children? Read your Bible. That was why Satan came, even though they were wayward children. He offered sacrifices and built an altar for them. And nothing could touch them except when God gave Satan permission. Satan himself returned and said, when I went, I met a man fortified by the understanding of an altar and I could not do anything. I have seen ordinary people rise to supernatural levels and dimensions because they understood the power of altars. Preachers, individuals, there are families that have decided, for instance, to set up an altar, an altar of prayer, to say, Lord, we agree as a family that we are going to pray. And by reason of that, they now authorize supernatural encounters that keep coming. There are people who have set up all kinds of prophetic altars. But listen to me, the protocol one more time, to tear down any altar, including the altar that has seemed to destroy everything around your family and lineage. Believe me when I tell you, just assuming it is gone because you are born again. Personal salvation is not the same as territorial salvation. There are rules of engagement. Are we together? There must be genuine repentance. I'm saying that because that is what we are going to do this night now genuine repentance for yourself and for everybody who is around your covering and then when that happens the next thing is a committal to live by the word of God to live by the word of God not to live by superstition not to run from church and then run to another herbalist and say what is this and uh 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 commit out to live by the word of God and then number three the sacrifice of your own life that you will live your life for his purposes the sacrifice of your praise and your worship and then the sacrifice of a seed let me talk for a minute about this seed don't be uncomfortable because I'm talking about it let me tell you the truth there have been all kinds of givings in the body of Christ and I salute and I respect it. I want to tell you why many people's giving has not produced any result. Sincerely, and I say this with due honor to the body of Christ, number one, most givings have simply been out of sympathy and whipping out emotions. So most of the givings have come like donations and there is a place for that. Are we together now? Yes. There are all kinds of seeds in the realm of the spirit and you can use your sacrifice to perfect the process of erecting an altar that stands against anything that comes to destroy you. So, apostles were experiencing untimely death in our family. Every year and every month, and every two two years someone must seem to die let me assure you if all you do is just get up and carry a seed and come and drop nothing will change i will not lie to you it's not all about money it's about knowing that there is a principal altar that powers that the altar of sin and iniquity so it starts with repentance whatever has given satan legal grounds to plague this family we come by the blood of the Lamb, by that blood of the eternal covenant, and we plead mercy. Now that is step one. And then to choose that we will walk in the ways of the Lord. And then when you do that, through your time of prayer, 
now your seed can walk let me tell you how to make your seed bruise the head of the serpent it's not just about money or something that costs you there is a revelation please look up that is behind what you do that means you are making a sacrifice number one as proof that you love God number two as proof that you trust God number three as a spiritual ordinance mandated by the wisdom of God whether you go to Satan or you go to God there are major problems in your life look at me Nigeria look at me dear people I can tell you this many unbelievers understand this mystery that is why as you are shouting and saying god forbid this man can never become my boss in the office he's looking at you with pity because they know where that authorization comes from they know that it does not come from the office and they go and consult mediums and the mediums will tell them pledge that when you get there you will come back you will serve the purposes of whatever and out of desperation yes pledge that your children will serve me yes sir pledge that your children just give me that office yes sir okay we'll make incisions as a as a as a testament let blood be on the altar let the god see it okay if you like tear my whole body let me just get that thing and they don't know what they are doing afterwards depending on what they are asking for they can say there is one person in your family you are going to have to donate either your wife or your child or your children or somebody <sighs> do you really need this office yes sir are you willing to do it yes sir and you find out that after that sacrifice no matter what else is done inevitably in a way you cannot explain that which they desire comes when God wanted to redeem man, he would have easily sent Angel Gabriel. Angel Gabriel is very faithful. He would have died and nothing would have happened. Or he would have sent Michael. Or he would have even sent two-thirds of the angels to come and die. At least two-thirds of the angels would be more than the, one angel died per, per person. He would have sent one angel to die per person. And he looked and there was that meeting. And he himself, knowing the laws he has put, he now said it has to be God that dies. And he took his only son. God carried his only son. What else in heaven is more expensive than Jesus? Mention one thing you know. Is it the throne? Is it the angels put together? In the beginning was the word. And he literally carried the word and sent him down to the earth. When Jesus was crying, Eloi, Eloi, Lamata. Do you know why no power can fight salvation? Find out the sacrifice that went to make it happen. The only way salvation can be destroyed if there is a higher and greater sacrifice, greater than Jesus, that is sacrificed. Are we together? You get what I'm saying now? Yeah. He carried his most precious and hung it upon that cross and stamped redemption eternally for men. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you the truth. When I saw certain things in my own life and I saw certain things across our territories, almost every territory, if we are to be sincere, there, there is a backlog of territorial limitations. Some of them, the things that I have mentioned, and it would take spiritual understanding to make up your mind and deal with these things once and for all. You can shout amen, you can fast, you can pray. Those are just portions and pieces of the truth until this is engaged with understanding. I have done this for my life I have done this for this ministry you cannot imagine the sacrifice that has gone in to see Jesus glorified in this ministry as you see it nothing is just happening by mistake no sir if you ever think it's by mistake think again right now that is the political season shrines all over this nation 
are full of men and women who are clamoring for they know that it's not just to stand and vote believers the mystery of the altar is the mystery of dominion it cannot be outside of the altar the Lord God of heaven sits upon that altar that guarantees our salvation there are many of you right now you came here tonight trusting God to end circles of infirmities circles and yokes can I tell you if you are the one who goes through this for your family so that no one else goes through it happy are you and God bless you for it I made up my mind as a person that listen no matter what it would take it would take let me be that bridge between the old and the new someone is in this place tonight and you came to church to make that decision I know some of you know what you suffered by reason of the background some of you now as it is even though you are Christians you are still going through it the worst you can do is to hand over this disaster to your children it is time to stand as a priest that you are and take advantage of the resources of wisdom including the understanding of the altar and to obtain grace to establish victory otherwise don't say my father was sick as soon as he was 50 years they just diagnosed him with something and he said it happened to his father too don't let the devil deceive you and say i am just 30 years 30 is 50 minus 15 it means you are also coming that everything that does not work and it continues and remains so they are powered by altars it's time to deal with it is someone ready tonight the first thing we are going to do right now please listen no distraction please don't allow the devil distract you we are working with time in the next two or three minutes you are going to cry a, we are going to do a corporate prayer of repentance before God don't be too proud oh you are going to cry before the God of it you don't have to lie down or whatever whatever position is comfortable not as an act of condemnation genuinely before the God of heaven and say Lord I am standing in repentance if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways some of you need to pray on behalf of your children on behalf of your husband on behalf of your wife lord i take the responsibility of priesthood there are men of god who need to stand on behalf of their congregations there are business ceos that need to stand on behalf of their corporations lord we plead mercy over every altar of sin and iniquity that is empowering every other negative altar death delays retrogression stagnation please pray god is giving you a chance shabalakatos those following from your homes following by way of television or internet when a moment of deep brokenness and repentance a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou will not despise mercy oh god mercy oh god give me psalm 51 while you are praying i'm going to be reading for you psalm 51 please give us psalm 51 while we pray have mercy on me O god according to thy loving kindness according to the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgression verse 2 please hurry up wash me thoroughly from my iniquity cleanse me from my sin for i acknowledge my transgression my sin is ever before me against thee thee only have i sinned and done this evil in your sight verse 4 that thou mightest be justified please give us verse 4 we're not done 
when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest verse 5 behold I was shaping in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me behold thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts shalt thou make me to know wisdom uh -huh. purge me with high soap and I shall be clean wash me and I shall be whiter than snow make me hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice hide thy face from my sins and blot out my iniquities verse 10 create in me a clean heart O God and renew a right spirit within me cast me not away from your presence take not thy Holy Spirit from me verse 12 restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and behold me with this and uphold me with a free spirit then i will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to thee deliver me from blood guiltiness O god thou god of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness O lord open thou my lips and my mouth shall speak forth your praise for thou desirest not sacrifice else I would have given it thou desirest not in bond offering thou delightest not in bond offering the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart O God thou shall not despise next verse do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion build thou the walls of Jerusalem someone is praying then shall thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness with bond offerings and whole bond offerings then shall they offer bullocks upon thy altar lift your voice in one minute you are praying for yourself pray for your organization Lord I found out the reason behind these consistent plagues consistent pain consistent delay consistent retrogression consistent failure consistent sickness mercy mercy in the name of jesus mercy we come boldly to the throne of grace we obtain mercy and we find grace to help in time of need mercy for nigeria mercy for our regions mercy for koinonia mercy for every family here mercy for every business mercy for every captain of industry every politician every head of parliament every professional mercy for our children mercy for those who have gone ahead of us in the name of jesus prayer point number two as for me and my house lord i agree with you this day that i will serve the lord no other name no other god no other force no other influence someone is praying please pray whether you come from Lagos, whether you come from Plateau State, from Kaduna State, from Maiduguri, from Enugu, Anambra, Cross River, Port Harcourt, it does not matter whether you are from the FCT. Lord, as for me and my house, I dissociate myself from the ordinances of idols. Someone is praying. I dissociate myself from the worship of deities fraternities with gods that are not the true god i declare that as for me and my family i worship the one true god jesus the son of the living god it doesn't matter what shrine you went to it doesn't matter what the fathers did lord we pray as a nation Lord, we pray as a region. 
as for me and my house as for me and this ministry someone pray as for me and my children pray as for me and my wife as for me and my husband as for me and my corporation outside make sure you are praying all the overflows as for me and my house we will live for Jesus we will serve the Lord pastors pray as for me and the vision god has given me no consulting mediums no consulting powers no consulting shrines it is jesus only jesus ever jesus only jesus ever as the source of power as the source of revelation as the source of illumination no bribery no corruption shabranda gebalaka tosko do prede ketola sedia embra katapa kote sabarikate pastors pray no manipulating members sincerity of truth loving them and serving them In the name of Jesus. Now, don't be tired. We are still praying. Right now, on legal basis, you are going to pray and declare that every altar that he that told has had any legal grounds on your life, the blood is against it. He said, We overcame them by the blood of the Lamb. Someone open your mouth and begin to decree. In the name of Jesus, the blood of the everlasting covenant is against altars of untimely death pray you know what alters by the patterns in your life call it by name and curse it by the god of heaven operations of poverty operations of failure at the edge of breakthrough visitations of wicked spirits molesting you that everything you do seems to fail Pray backing of the throne of grace. I come by the backing of the throne of grace. Someone pray. A new order is imagined from you tonight. Your children will thank you. Your children's children will thank you. They will say, at what point did this transformation start? And you will tell them, when I found the revelation of the mystery of altars. Someone prophesy. My father may have died early my mother may have died early but i will not die early i will not die on timely death in the name of jesus i am crushing that altar by the power of the blood of jesus pray graduates from the families no job no lifting pray people don't get married or they get married and the home don't stay barrenness repetitive patterns failures in business someone pray
the operation of these altars come to an end from Lagos to Abuja to Maiduguri to Kaduna State to Rivers to Cross River to Kogi State I don't care how long they have lasted Lord we pray someone pray enough is enough in the name of jesus someone pray enough is enough enough is enough we are bringing a new order pray for your family enough is enough enough is enough of children becoming useless enough is enough of people never finishing what they start enough is enough in the name of jesus in the name of jesus please listen to me in the name of jesus when I started ministry and I discovered that not many people from my region had had the privilege to rise to a global level and to stay and to last sustainably in ministry, I said minus me, but I knew that it would not just be empty talk. You see, let me tell you something about altars. They don't care whether you are a pastor. They don't care whether you are whatever once there is no compliance you can stand and be making a lot of noise and yet nothing will happen i made up my mind that i will serve the purposes of god at a global level and that anything that pegs people from my region and keeps them at a particular level that it will be my lifetime i will rewrite that narrative you are going to pray one more prayer before i speak over it please don't be tired you came here tonight to deal with these things once and for all you are going to pray my destiny and my glory i connect you to the throne of grace go ahead and pray my destiny and my glory you are connected to that altar called the throne of grace my destiny and my glory you are not connected to ancestry my destiny and my glory you are not connected to wizardry and human manipulation my destiny and my glory you are not connected to earthly and platforms you are connected to the throne of grace someone pray my destiny my glory pray for your ministry my business your influence the workings of the spirit in your life connected to the throne of grace backed up by the king of kings himself backed up by the blood of the eternal covenant the meaning of that is no enchantment and no divination no enchantment no activities of wizardry necromancy the wasters of destiny they have no access to your life again connected to the altar please pray you are not wasting your time connect your business by faith in the son of the living god not as a blind ritual no let it be known in the realm of the spirit that from this day forward i am no longer connected to ancestry someone is praying let it be known in the realm of the spirit that from this day forward i am not connected to the limitations of bloodline let it be known in the realm of the spirit that from this day forward connected to the throne of grace
let it be known to principalities and powers let it be known to thrones and dominions that there is a switch of loyalty let it be known to principalities and powers that there is a switch of loyalty from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's dear son hallelujah praise the name of the Lord hear me my dear people everyone is destined by Christ to rise there is nobody who is destined to remain down please place your right hand on your head prophetically you're my glory the lifter up of my head you're my glory the lifter up of my head I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about I lay me down and I slept I wait for the Lord sustains me but thou O Lord art a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head hallelujah in the name of Jesus we are still praying please don't be distracted I stand by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic any system of authorization whether as a result of personal sin whether as a result of territorial sin or foundations and bloodline by the mercy of God I decree and declare their legal hold over you is hereby broken hereby broken therefore every negative pattern every frequent occurrence that is inconsistent with that which the Word of God says should be in the name that is above all names I bring to end those patterns now I bring to end those patterns now patterns of untimely death patterns of perversions patterns of delay patterns of limitation be broken now patterns of poverty and begging and hardship be broken now patterns of mediocrity and inferiority be broken in the name of Jesus hear me where you have not risen to before by reason of these limitations I stand by the power of the Holy Ghost rise to that level rise to that level in career rise to that level hear me if there is anyone here whose destiny is not opened and is not speaking you love God you are sincere but your life is grounded and that's what you have seen happen to other people in the name of Jesus I decree and declare like a little flower opens up and begins to bud I command your destiny to open up open up financially open up hallelujah now in the name of Jesus if there is any priesthood servicing any altar against you whether by reason of where you come from that means there are human beings alive who continue to foil those altars Manikesh Shabarata Ebre Katoskadia Makabraskada Latoshenekete Ebre Ketebarata in the name of Jesus I bring to an end the reign of such priesthoods their enchantments will no longer work like the prophets of Baal they will not receive any answers again we shut the realm of the spirit against them 
we shut the power of the sun against them we shut the power of the wind against them we shut the power of the earth against them in the name of jesus every medium of expression ceases to work for them if there is anyone here having any infirmity in your body that has defied medical attention and you know that this is a direct result of witchcraft right now in the name of jesus that sickness leaves your body now help them please that sickness leaves your body now high blood pressure diabetes hepatitis in a parish it leaves your body now lumps and growths in your body demonic things that have defied some of you have had surgeries again and again and it will not go i curse it now in the name of jesus hear me every experience of seeing dead people come to harass you my bible says that the living and the dead have nothing in common there are times you may have encounters with the spirits of just men made perfect but that does not bring oppression in the name of jesus the system that authorizes familiar spirits to use the faces of men and oppress you and plant all kinds of things in your body and your destiny it is broken now it is broken now please put down your hand now hear me I'm going to give you an instruction every one of us in this place you are going to give a sacrifice please if you don't believe what I'm saying and what we're doing that's all right you will not go to hell are we together I will be wicked to you to just round up and say let's go this is not how we God brought victory please hear me a sacrifice is not donation a sacrifice is not about money it is about fulfilling number one a spiritual ordinance this is not offering this is not tight this is you standing in for yourself for your ministry for your business while i was preparing this i told god myself i said lord i've worked with you to an extent that you please tell me what i am going to bring as a sacrifice for my own destiny i've gone past the level where i'll try to you are the one that has brought everything please hear me i mean what i'm telling you and i want you to believe what i'm saying i'm speaking to the body of christ and i'm speaking to our global family these are ordinances david had an opportunity he even gave, I mean, uh, Arauna told him, I said, look, I respect you, take. And David said, no, I will not give God nothing. I will not give God anything that does not cost me nothing. And the Bible says, as soon as he offered the sacrifice, the plague stopped. There are things that have stopped in the life. So I've shared with you my story, how I carried a sacrifice and went down to Canaan land. I was already experiencing results. And God had shown me mercy but God gave me an instruction and I went there with joy I cannot tell you the sacrifices I have made for myself and this ministry that has brought us where we are if you think Abuja just opened like that please think again not with the wicked spirits that roam around the earth there are mysteries you become indomitable by the mysteries that you engage not just talking nonsense there are businesses that have been grounded at the same level there are ministries that have not crossed certain levels it's not just about membership but come on god must bring people who will be saved every day there are some of you you will never have helpers that arise and run for you you have committed yourself to repentance the word of the lord prayer sacrifice i'm going to make a prophetic declaration but please hear me 
I'm saying this because number one, I love you and I have a responsibility to teach you the truth. Men of God, sadly across the body of Christ, you will find excesses where people have been manipulated and all of that. But I can tell you this is true. Every time God comes like this once and again, it is because a new season has come for you. As soon as Noah came out, he sacrificed of all the clean beasts. When I read everything, I said, so what was left? When David, every time, you read it in the Bible, the moment they get to very prophetic seasons, there they go. For some of you, God has already been speaking to you. I'm only confirming what he has been telling you. It's not that I told you knew it. Some of you for months, God has been speaking to you. Hallelujah. This ministry you see has come thus far by this altar of sacrifice. It is powerful. It's changed my life. I cannot begin to tell you. The doors that God has opened, when you see the things that God does through my life, you either have to be a demonic devilish person serving satan or you'll be somebody who is serving the lord sincerely but in either case you cannot get this by human strength it is impossible i'm going to pray for you now i'm not going to manipulate you i don't know how you are going to do it i'm going to ask the media please project the ministry account number and whether it is for your family whether it is for you as an individual whether it is for business whether it is for your children i already know what i am doing for this ministry as god has put in my heart there is no going back i thank god for where god has brought me but i know there are still greater heights and greater frontiers there are greater mantles that have not yet obtained and there is no resting with this business so please i want you to listen very carefully whether you are sowing now, whether you are sowing later, I don't know. Don't, please don't be carried away by emotions. Take away sentiments. If you don't believe what we are doing, you are going to, you will not go to hell. You can just remain and you can listen to other parts and what I've taught. Make sure you act not just because you love me or you believe me, but you are acting by revelation that brings you breakthrough. Are we together now? This is very important. But this is any great man any great ministry any great business any great platform knows that there will always be seasons like this this is to end cycles let me tell you why you are sowing this sacrifice is not just donation no no so just dropping it is not the issue you are going to tie to this sacrifice the seasons and the patterns that the blood of the eternal covenant is bringing to an end for some of you it is untimely death you are saying lord for me and my children we are tired of crying over this it comes to an end for some you are saying i am tired of this epileptic i am up today down tomorrow i am even afraid of my results because i don't know if it can stay as far as the earth remains for those who know how to rear this altar none of these things shall fail hallelujah i'm going to pray for you please don't don't start sowing allow me pray before you do that it's like i said it's not about please all across the globe you can just have the details don't begin to sow until i pray please if you have done so don't feel bad i'm going to pray this is how it is done when cain and abel offered sacrifices one did it carelessly and the other did it with intention and understanding and he rose to heaven i want to pray for you and you will watch the wonder working power there are pastors here what will begin to happen to your ministry will surprise you there are individuals business people all kinds of things this is truth from scripture it will not fail not after repentance and then returning to the word of god with brokenness and then prayer and then sacrifice of yourself your worship your seed and then prophetic declarations oh come on please it is the reason why today i can lie down and go to bed and not care whether somebody is taking my name to a shrine or taking my name somewhere i am asleep but the altar is awake 
there are some of you the seeds you are sowing today is what will become the ladder to the realms that you are climbing into and please let me put a very quick disclaimer especially for those um, online make sure that you work with the official account numbers no proxies please avoid scammers you'll be um, you'll be surprised that as we're teaching this there are scammers who inside of them to connect for their deliverance and let God help them to get this thing genuinely they will be waiting in to pray on people the same energy it takes to cheat is the same energy it takes to listen you are already online listen and obey hallelujah oh, people pack courses on themselves and their children because of 10 naira 20 naira one dollar 20 dollar you bring a course that is transgenerational let's pray He gave gifts to men. Father, I stand by the privilege of priesthood. First over our global family and then the body of Christ by the privilege of the election of grace. Please help those under the anointing. I have declared your word. And Lord, I know that this works based on the integrity of your word. Lord, we have cried in repentance before you individually, territorially, and even as touching bloodlines and foundations. We have committed ourselves to serve only you, the one true God. Father, your people and all of us together are about to lay down sacrifices some in cash some in kind in whatever means lord you are not a scammer you are not a fraudster we men of god may have made merchandise out of these principles and we repent for it but lord we cry in the name of jesus and i pray by the privilege of spiritual leadership and priesthood that everyone under the sound of my voice may fire fall upon your sacrifice may fire fall upon your sacrifice may fire fall upon your sacrifice let every demonic spirit witness your sacrifice and witness the fire that falls upon it in the name of jesus christ for everything you are connecting to this sacrifice whether as individuals as a couple as a business in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god i decree and declare may the heavens be open over that issue in the name of jesus everything that has refused to walk in your life i command it to begin to walk now by reason of your sacrifice i make this prophetic declaration all doors open all doors open all doors open i stand upon the grace of our fathers in this nation as i have received by grace and by the privilege of the mercy of God, I stand upon their personal altars with God and we stand in agreement under that grace. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, judgment upon every wickedness, judgment upon everything connected to ancestry by your sacrifice in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me anyone here appointed to death i decree and declare when death comes let it meet your sacrifice when limitation comes let it meet your sacrifice when failure comes let it meet your sacrifice it would never be that you gave and went down please hear me i decree and declare for every one child who has gone wayward who is giving any parent headache or tears by reason of your sacrifice 
may the angel of the Lord fish them back to the cross from America to Europe to Nigeria everyone who is lost every spouse who is not saved every child who is not saved every woman everyone connected to any family that is yet to encounter Jesus they will not die till they have found Jesus hallelujah now please hear me if there is anything that you may have done personally with your own life that has created an accusation in the realm of the spirit that the devil might want to use against you and your children's children in the name of Jesus by the blood of the lamb the word of your testimony and even this sacrifice let it be blotted out now let it be blotted out now let it be blotted out now finally i pray for you you have taken from your resources you have taken from whatever to give on to god i decree and declare the storehouses are portioned for you that have been blocked by all kinds of demonic hindrances i declare them open like a flood now open like a flood now may strangers arise and come to you you will not beg you will not borrow in the name of jesus christ hear me for some of you by reason of this program tonight you will start having very strange angelic encounters by reason of this meeting tonight there is a restoration of dreams a restoration of visions a restoration of encounters please hear me if there is any physical planting in any house any village whatever was taken whether your name was taken to any shrine or whatever in the name of jesus christ we declare that devil catches fire now whether you are asleep whether you are awake anybody that tries to build any altar to fight you i stand prophetically they will go down instantly and anybody who has vowed that for as long as i am alive this family will not rise this family will not know peace in the name of jesus i declare the righteous judge by the power that raised christ from the dead he will silence such devils in jesus name hallelujah in one minute i'd like you to wave your hands and begin to thank the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb that was slain faithful faithful is the lamb Faithful, faithful is the Lamb. Faithful, faithful is the Lamb that was slain. Hallelujah. Please hear me. From tonight, I want you to carry a mentality. Not just the mentality of your earthly origin. When you hear them say there are powers that are going to fight and destroy people, remember. Don't just remember koinonia. Remember the throne of grace that it is the altar that defends you when someone looks at you and crosses himself and stamps the ground you don't need to waste your time he's not fighting you he's fighting the throne in the name of jesus christ praise the lord all right so now you can go ahead and give let me make an altar call it's called an altar call listen very carefully there are people here you have heard me preach you have heard the word of god and God right now is asking you, please look up. Let me have your attention. Let's minimize movement. There are people who are saying, Apostle, I came here. 
and I need to be connected to that altar, the throne of grace. The Bible already tells you how to come. It says you should come boldly before the throne of grace that you will obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Two categories in one. There are those who are saying, this is my first time. I want to come to Jesus and permanently close that door. There are those who are saying, I need restoration in my spiritual life. I'm going to count one to five. Very quickly for the sake of time, I want you to boldly come and stand here. God bless you for coming already. God bless you for coming. One, Koinonia, celebrate them as they come. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Keep coming. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. That was slain. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. That was slain. Praise Him, Hallelujah. Praise Him, Hallelujah. Praise Him, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you for the courage to come to Jesus Christ. I'd like you to please lift your right hand. If you are joining them, please join them very quickly. All the overflows outside and then those who are connecting online. Yes, your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life genuinely. To be connected to that throne of grace. The greatest altar. Lift your right hand, please, high above your head. Say this loud and clear. Say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I repent of my sins and I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Savior, be my Lord, and be my King. From tonight, I declare that the power of sin, of Satan, of hell, and of the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I am a child of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, I stretch my hands towards these our precious people. They have come to that altar, that throne of grace, to obtain grace, to obtain mercy and find grace to help. I decree and declare, by the integrity of God's word and according to your confessions, I declare your sins forgiven. In the name of Jesus, I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life. From tonight until forever, you are washed by the blood of the Lamb. Satan has no legal access over your life. You go from glory to glory and from grace to grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please, I'd like you to follow the counselors. They are waving the placard. They will just receive you, have a moment with you, and you'll be back to your seat. Koinonia, let's celebrate them very quickly. Hallelujah. Please, let me encourage you. Do me a favor by giving your loved ones or anybody you love that you know needs to hear this teaching please sow it as a seed to someone's life it's free you can go to koinonia global and get it but please make sure that someone perhaps there are people who may not agree with the things they don't worry you just give someone and let them be blessed for the sake of the purposes of god you can give your children you can give your spouse and the lord will bless you in jesus name hallelujah on Wednesday down till Friday, Saturday, we'll be in Zaria. It will be a wonderful time. We'll be visiting our Zaria family to bless and have moments of encounter and power. So all of you who are within that region, you're welcome to join us in Zaria. And then on Sunday, we'll be having our school of ministry practicum here. Let's celebrate Jesus. So please make sure that you come around and let's celebrate God. It's going to be a mighty time. At the end of it, I will come and speak over our lives and the Lord will grant us grace in Jesus' name. Have you been blessed tonight? Please rise up on your feet. Father, thank you. We honor you and we bless you for your grace. 
we decree and declare that the results from this that you have shown us today will begin to speak instantly in the name of Jesus Christ we will encounter your power and your grace in unprecedented dimensions I declare that this week beginning for you is blessed you will know that many altars have come to an end permanently by the strange and fearful results that will begin to speak in your life my God bless you in the name of Jesus go from glory to glory and grace to grace in Jesus name I pray after the grace do well to hug and greet one another on your way out let's share the grace together the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever God bless you and see you on Sunday